Peacock 45 here, along with Slamfire. He jumped up on the table, wants to be part of the video again. <laughs> In fact, he's been up here for about 10 minutes while we've been getting ready. Uh, you know, I think he wanted to sniff a little bowel stall. He's just been into everything. He wanted to pick up a bullet. And I think he wants to shoot the high power. And that's what this video is about. Sorry if you hate cats. Uh, I, you might know I, I was not a cat lover necessarily my whole life. I didn't hate cats, but I didn't realize until recently they can be great pets. Slampire's a great old cat. He's just a great cat. He's like a dog, aren't you, buddy? He's like a first class pet. He's like a dog. <laughs> But anyway, we'll let him hang out for a minute. We're gonna shoot a Browning High Power, as you can tell from the title, uh, those of you who can read, and that's most of you, even most of my Kentucky relatives can read a few words, and it probably says something about FN High Power. And when you saw the uh, title, some of you probably thought, ah, Hickok, he ain't all that smart. He misspelled High Power. It's supposed to be H-I dash power. And that's one of the things about this farm. This is different one than the uh, the one we did uh, several years back. This one is mine. I've had for a year at least, but it is a, a genuine. It's an FN high power H I G H. Where are you going, Slamfire? You gonna take off on us? But it's a it's a H I G H power. He's on the track or something. Why don't you come over here and say bye? Are you just going to leave without saying bye to the fans? They like you. Come in. Okay. Okay. He's off on the hunt. Uh, but the uh, original, the FNs, were called High Powers, H-I-G-H. All right? It's, it's in the literature. It's not something I dreamed up or, or made up. <laughs> they were High Powers, H-I-G-H, and then this power, P-O-W-E-R. And it, it, it relates to the capacity because, you know, this was kind of a new thing. Uh, to have like 13 rounds plus one in a, in a handgun. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not sure if, if anybody had, had had anything that had that kind of capacity yet in a mainstream firearm. And so that's where the high power comes from. It's not necessarily, wow, we think the 9mm is the most powerful round in the world or anything. So this one is FN. You can see from the, it's clear from the, uh, the slide there. You know, it's got FN on it. It's not, uh, doesn't have F uh, Browning Firearms Company or whatever. They put that on there starting in, I think, 1954 when they started importing them into North America. Okay? So this one, as best I can tell, is 1952. And that's the date on it. All right, so this is an F FN Browning High Power, 1952. It still has the internal extractor. You know, it's the difference there. If you look at the other video on the one or any most most of the high power videos you see will probably have the external extractor and uh, this one has the thumb uh, kind of nail cut out here and that's they stopped doing that I think around 1960 62 same with the external extractor okay now the reason I sound so stupid about this and ignorant is well for one thing I am both of those right but it's hard to date these with a serial number like you can with a lot of firearms. You can look up a Winchester Model 92 or 1886. Look at the serial number in about two seconds online and give it the year it was made. Okay? And that's the same with a lot of firearms. But then with some, it's not. Records are burned or they're destroyed. Uh, and with, but these, it's, sometimes it's kind of clear. This seems like a commercial uh, serial number to me. You know, 56,000. Uh, it was kind of puts it, you know, around 52 because I, I did find one where somebody was seems to be absolutely certain theirs was like 50, maybe 8,000 or something, and theirs was 55, you know. So manufacturer they were sure of and all this. So, so, so the serial number gives you some indication, but they would do these in uh, lots, and if like if a police department somewhere in the world wanted 500 of them, or even a, an army, and they wanted a, a specific serial number range then it might be one through 8,000 or something. So just because you have one with a low serial number, doesn't mean it, oh man, I got me an early high power. This thing must have been like the first year of manufacture. Now it could be, if you do your research, and so you can find out through other methods, you know, what kind of sites does it have on it and different features of it. So it is a high power and it likes to give you hammer bite. That's why I put the Band-Aid on, so I could shoot it and not worry about that, okay? Now, I think I'll shoot the paper target before it blows off. We're getting a little bit of wind here. So let's see if it'll uh, hit in center. Let's see if it will smoke pot. Oh, I'm trying to get a 
away. No, you don't. No, you don't. There you go. Well, let's just shoot a two later. Yeah. Boom, she's empty. All right. So yeah, you have a little trouble dating them, the exact date, but uh, you know, not necessarily. Okay. So, so this is a cool gun. And speaking of precious metal, whenever you have a uh, oh a vintage firearm, uh, if you've been around firearms very long, I think you feel the same way. If you're interested in firearms, there's just something about a, an older firearm. And you know, 52 to me doesn't seem that long ago. But it, it really is, you know. Right, that's almost 50 years, isn't it? I don't know. I, I, I can't. I was never good at math, but that's been a while since this was made, and it's uh, it's all intact. The serial numbers and numbers all match up, and and it's it's just really neat. Now, if you're a Browning uh, high power expert, you know I'm not an expert in anything. I'm jack of all trades. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong on on this this, this date. If you if you're sure now, if you have any insight into that, but I did I did my research. I'm gonna shoot it before I take it apart. I like to get it nice and hot, but I've even looked at the barrel lug and different things, and I found enough evidence to uh, pretty much confirm for me. I'm gonna do a little more pot smoking <laughs> to confirm the date on this. All right. Now I could be wrong. Still shoots great after all these years. Yeah. If I miss, it's me. There's a gong on the last round. Uh, so, you know, being that old and an older design, it still, uh, still works great. I mean, they've been making these things wild enough. Uh, I think they suspended uh, manufacture in about 2017. But, uh, but they, they, uh, they, uh, what they do, they stopped making them officially, I think around 2017, but I think they're licensed, and so you may be seeing them, you, you probably know more about that than I do. I haven't been shopping for a, a new Browning High Power. Uh, there may be somebody now uh, under license making more of them than ever, I don't know. But anyway, you know the history we've talked about. I'll link to the first video, even though this is not a chapter two, really. Try and get a little rain here. This is a different gun. This is a really a different gun. And you know, I think I talked about in that video how you know John Browning died, and uh, he went over to FN and did, made a lot of guns. And uh, he was in on the early designing of this. And then, uh, okay, here we go. Everybody mispronounces this name, including me, so I'm going to mispronounce it. Du Donne, I think I, I, I found online someone who actually was like Belgium or French, and they said they they knew for sure how it should be said. Yeah, the internet's always correct, right? Du Donne save that's how they were pronouncing it okay so anyway his name is i hear it pronounced save and save and everything else but they had it as save just like you save some money or something so anyway he worked with browning and then browning died in 26 and then uh, it was up to to save uh to uh, to finish the project which was years and years the 1911 patents ran out i read in i think 1928 so he was able to incorporate some of that into it so a lot of people consider this like what the 1911 uh, should have been, or like uh, the improvement of the 1911 in a lot of ways. And uh, I don't know, verdict's out on that. Let's, uh, let's take a couple more shots. I wanna shoot, in case we get a little rain here, I don't want these targets to be standing. That's, that really would bother me. Yeah. Feels like a high capacity assault pistol to me. Yeah. Wonder where all the gun banners were in the, the 1930s when this came out. In fact, it's called a P35 quite often. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's a thing uh, to a little short aside. You know, that's a crazy. Semi automatic firearms have been around forever, 100 years more plus. Semi automatic pistol holds 13 plus one, 14 rounds been around since the 30s, the 1930s, you know, uh, you know, it's people that, that cause problems, isn't it? It's not pieces of steel and hardware. Now, why do I have a Glock out here? Well, you know me, I've always had to have a Glock. Uh, this, you know, before the Glock 19 was the Browning High Power, 
Okay, that's kind of why I headed out here. You got a gun that's very, very common, holds a lot of rounds, uh, shoots well, it's loved by a lot of people. It's also hated by a lot of people, isn't it? Glock 19. So this is kind of the Glock 19 of the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and right on up until these other uh, Wonder 9s came about. Yeah, so some of you new to firearms, you may not even be familiar at all with the Browning High Power. You know, we try to assume that, okay? Uh, but yeah, 1935. That, that goes way back, way back. And I'm going to shoot it again. The, uh, I've always liked it. I owned one, as I think I mentioned, uh, it was in the 80s. And I was into competition and stuff, and I thought, man, I like this gun, but yeah, that safety is hard to flick off, and it pinched me, and so uh, this is nothing I'm going to compete with. And so I just traded it off, and you know me, I'm going to go over there again. I'm going to hit that buffalo if I can. Got him twice, finally fell. Got me a ram. Let's hit the gong again. Boom, let's try red plate on the left. I can't tell on that one. I'm gonna try the one on the right. Okay, I ran out of ammo, so I have an excuse not to keep trying to miss it. Uh, so a lot of history with this. If uh, you like the firearms history? Yeah, it's got the disconnect. It's got the magazine disconnect. That's one of the negatives uh, for a lot of people. The other negative, the big one, is uh, where it pinches you. You get hammer bite with it, just like the original 1911. <laughs> it's like, come on, John Browning, you're the genius of all geniuses. You know, surely you knew this is a while after 1911, you know, even before you died, 1926. You, didn't you hear the reports and, and you know that the, the redesign to the A1 to, to kind of alleviate, mitigate the hammer bite on the 1911. And here you're in on the creation of an improved 1911, so to speak. And we get hammer bite returning. Come on, guys. We can blame that on Save, maybe, or Saeve. All right, we'll blame that on him. And we don't want to blame anything negative on John Browning. That would be sacrilegious, right? Uh, but you know, hammer bite. Hmm. Gosh, all you have to do is make that a little bit longer, just a little more beaver tail, and that would have taken care of that. So anyway, so anyway, through some of the features of the firearm, and then uh, also on the barrel lug, like I was saying, I was talking before I got really interrupted. Uh, you know, this little thumb print that makes it easier to take out the uh, slide lock. So that's kind of cool. They should have left that in there. Extra machining, I'm sure. But I was talking to you experts, wasn't I? And uh, just asking for your help in, in case I'm wrong uh, on this. But based on my research, uh, and I'm not gonna lose sleep over it either way, but I think based on my research and uh, the period of years where they quit putting that little thumb indentation and the external extractor and all that, they changed that. Uh, and then also I read that on the barrel lug, in other places, maybe you can find a little, you can see that, that's a two, it looks like an eight, if the light's not right, but it's a two in a partial box. Yeah, it's a two. Uh, that that indicates the year it was made. Okay, two. So, all right, that narrows it down. Well, I know it wasn't 42, and I knew it wasn't 62, because they quit doing some of these other things before then, so it had to be 52. The guy I bought it from, in fact, said it was an early 50s model, and, uh, which I, at the time, couldn't confirm or deny, of course. Uh, I knew it was the older one. And so it does appear to be 52, all right? If you know anything different, uh, let me know. Uh, but uh, and I'll continue all right, research and when I get some free time, right? And so uh, the Browning High Power is a classic. Uh, they were making them, of course, in Belgium and uh, before the war at the FN you know, factory. And uh, then we had the slight interruption, right? World War II, and the Germans took over Belgium and the FN uh, factory. And as I read the top brass, the top leaders and folks at there, they were able to get away. Uh, I think a lot of them went to Canada, and they started, they got the plans and everything for the firearm out of there and uh, with them, and they were, I think I sent them to Canada, John Inglis, 
ING, I think, LIS company, and they made them. They started making them over there in Canada. And I think the Germans moved production to Berlin. And so, there, ironically, they were being made for both the Axis and the Allies, you know, uh, both teams, you know, during World War II. I think it was later, pretty much, but they were being made uh, in Canada and then shipped around to the Allies. So, interesting firearm. So, you see Nazi markings on some of these, the older ones. The ones with the adjustable sights, and they've got a groove here for a shoulder stock. Those are the early ones, the pre-war ones. And I think they continued that in during the, the World War II models, at least the ones made in Berlin, maybe in Canada too, I don't know. So there's those old variations. You see a bigger sight on one, that's an older one, okay? That's an older one, pre-war or maybe uh, during World War II, I don't know. So then, then after the war, they resumed manufacture and been making the things forever, up until just recently. And again, still under contract, I think. So, so if you didn't know it, and I don't know how much I didn't look at the first video I did. I know I went over some of this in that video. But if you didn't know it, uh, I mean, this is one of the classic handguns of all time. And that's one of the things that attracted me to this one. I knew it was older, but I didn't know how old for sure. And it was an early model, and it was all intact. And you know, from grips right on down. Uh, and even though they pinch me, and they're not as much fun. And I'm getting a pinch today. I'm getting hammer bite, even through that Band-Aid. So I need to put a piece of thicker duct tape, I guess, when I shoot the thing, to thoroughly enjoy it. I'm not a baby. I don't mind a little pinching. It's just that uh, it's kind of like I'll put a band in on this finger if I want to shoot a firearm that uh, where the trigger happens to pinch me after a little while. Um, I don't do it because I'm a, maybe I am a baby. Maybe I should cry for you. But it's just so I can go ahead and shoot it, and, and so it's like a normal experience, and, uh, and I'm not I'm not uh, bothered by that so much, and it doesn't overshadow my shooting experience. Okay, and I don't have a wound afterwards, right? So I think we have one more mag loaded up. Let's shoot it, and you notice I'm not even going to shoot that Glock 19. I won't even talk about it anymore. Okay, <laughs> I lied. Now this is uh, this was the Glock 19 of the day, kind of, and uh, I mean. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's a beautiful firearm, isn't it? That's one reason people hate these polymer pistols. And they're easy to hate as far as looks because that, you know, nicely blued firearm, beautiful wood and steel is, uh, is just special. All right, so let's fire a couple more shots, let you go. Well, we've got a little bowling to do, don't we? Oh, I wounded it, I guess. Yeah, I didn't even move. <laughs> Yee, doggy. All right, let's try the tree. I know, let's put it in the holster. I'll put the safety on. All right. Pull him out. Put the safety off. All right, we don't have to quit on a miss. So, I mean, this is a firearm a lot of people, you know, have carried in battle and uh, police have used them, civilians have carried them. You might be carrying one right now. It might be your carry gun, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised somebody's carrying one. I don't think I had any trouble with hollow points. Uh, I've actually carried it. I remember, yeah, this being my defensive pistol, the one I had uh, on the road. I remember having it with me on some trips. Uh, I just like it. And one last thing, if you ever hold one, probably for you too, unless you have really small hands, it just fits like a glove. They just feel really good in the hand. That's what attracted me to the very first one. I had to have one when I felt one. Oh man, my, just felt good. Of course, I didn't realize hammer bite would be coming my way. <laughs> you can't really uh, get that in the gun shop or the gun show. Uh, you gotta fire it before you get hammer bitten, okay? So anyway, an FN version, earlier version of the Browning, high power, H-I-G-H, power, all right? That's not a mistake in the title of the video. This is an FN Browning high power, okay? And again, I don't know if I mentioned it, the reason they changed that was because Browning also had a rifle called the high power. It was, uh, it was, it was called Browning H-I-G-H high power. Browning did, not FN. Yeah, I'm correct on that, I think. Uh, and uh, they didn't want the confusion because you got two guns but by the same name, so they changed the spelling to H-I-Power, all right? I think that was in 
54 long in there. All right, so if you know more about these, uh, yeah, chime in. And if you think I'm wrong on the date on that for some reason, uh, again, it's in the uh, 56,000 range, and you saw the marking on the lug, unless you were out of the room to get pizza or something. Uh, and so uh, let me know if I'm wrong. You've got the internal extractor, you've got the little thumb thing there, everything. So, so pretty neat gun. It's, 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 it's a classic. Glad you came by today, and uh, we appreciate your support. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.